Hi everyone, I'm Ibrahim. And I'm Abreez. And we both work as doctors in the NHS. Welcome to this awesome video <laughs> where we are out in the countryside and we're gonna talk about how we got into internal medicine training. So internal medicine training is essentially what core medical training used to be. Yep. And it can be either two years or three years long. But what I first want you guys to understand is that when you want to join IMT, you will need to have first and foremost GMC registration. Now, how to get GMC registration is something that Ibrahim and I actually talked about. In another video, uh -huh. which you can find the link somewhere there on the top. Uh, yep. There are only three ways you can get GMC registration. So obviously, if you want to join internal medicine training in the UK, the first thing you have to target is getting GMC registration. Once you have GMC registration, then you have to think about how can you become eligible to apply for internal medicine training. But before going into that, let me just give you a like, small idea about what is internal medicine training. A lot of people kind of get confused because uh, like, you know, the terminology is different in different countries. Uh, like generally speaking, general internal medicine is one big term and in general internal medicine, I think somewhere there is the acute medicine is somewhere there as well. So when we say internal medicine training in the UK, it actually means the core level training for all the medical specialties. So if you know already, we have another video explaining what's a run through training and a, a uncoupled training is. Ibris have done excellently. I remember that video. And oh, also, right. also in post graduation in the UK video, Ibris have talked about this. Just to give you an idea, some of the specialty training in the UK are run through. That means you start and you finish your entire training in one go. And some of the specialties are uncoupled. That means core level training is separate from the specialty training like most of the medicine trainings, like hmm. say cardiology, gastroenterology, renal medicine, respiratory, all of their training is for four years, but to get into those training, you have to have core level training finished first, and the core level training is internal medicine. So there is no specialty called internal medicine. There is no specialty like that. There is general medicine, and there is specialized, like, you know, whichever specialty you go. So after finishing this internal medicine training, we make ourselves eligible to be a medical registrar and make ourselves eligible to apply for a specialty training of our choice. I think that's a good sum idea about what internal medicine training yes. is. Uh, so you don't get any, uh, uh, like, you know, certificate, a certificate or, or consultancy or anything after finishing this training because it's just making you a medical registrar. And after this, you get to choose which specialty you want to do. So if you want to do, say, a respiratory medicine. So basically, while doing respiratory medicine, you can still take part in general medicine. And after doing respiratory medicine for four years, you can get dual certificate, one for general medicine and one for respiratory medicine. Mm -hmm. If you do geriatric medicine, there is a pathway which can lead to stroke as well. So you can become a general medicine consultant a geriatric medicine consultant and a stroke consultant as well. So there are many uh, sub-specialties connected to each other, but more often than not, medical specialties always leads to, at the same time, dual CCT with general internal medicine. Because you did three years here and you'll do four years. Out of those four years, you'll have a curriculum to go through for general medicine. So it doesn't matter if you're an intern, if you have years of experience behind you. As of the making of this video, there's actually no overqualification to get into IMT. So you can be somebody who is fairly well qualified back home. Now, whether you would want to start an internal medicine training or perhaps try for a, directly for a specialty training post is up to you. But that's just to say that the option is available. But so we, for, we'll discuss about that later. If you already have MRCP and how yeah. to get into later part, we'll just be discussing in a minute. But yeah, I'll just go on. So for us, for us, for the two of us, we had just done internship. We didn't have any other experience with us. Um, so we needed to do one year more so it didn't have to be uk necessarily it could be back home it could be in the uk but we went ahead and we worked in the uk for one year during that time we got our foundation competency signed off what is now known as the crest form or your certificate of readiness to enter specialty training so in that time we also did some audits we did some quality improvement pro uh, projects we did some teachings we did a lot of extracurricular stuff to make our portfolio look super duper awesome and what essentially we also did was we made sure in the departments that we were in, we started off in A&E, then we went and did stroke, hematology, and oncology. 
um, to make sure that we kind of had a nice basis of understanding of what we needed to know before we actually went in for the interview. Now, I know a lot of times people are concerned, like for instance, yes, we're married, so how did we both get into the same hospital and get in the same training? And that is a very valid concern. So while it's not necessarily something that you can always guarantee, there are some ways that you can ensure or at least increase your chances. One of those ways, of course, is by applying for the same hospitals when you are ranking your preferences. So after you apply for your, you know, you submit your application online, you get shortlisted for an interview. You go to the interview. You don't have to go to the interview on the same day or in the same place or anything like that in order to make sure that you guys end up in the same hospital. We just did that because obviously it's more convenient to go together. Um, but after you do that and you do well in your interview, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, and then they tell you, yes, you've been found appointable and here's a list of all the places that you could potentially get into. What you have to do then is see all the hospitals that are there. All right, so for us, we already knew we didn't want to work outside of England. So we took Wales out, we took Scotland out, we took out Northern Ireland. We thought about areas that we would want to move to and we really researched the areas around and then we ranked those higher. So for instance, we both put, you know, places in the Southwest together on the higher end so that we could increase our chances of getting into those places together. So as much of those preferences that you can put that you're in the same place, it will increase your likelihood of getting into the same area. Maybe even if you're super lucky into the same hospital, because if you can't even get into the same hospital, at least if you're in the same area, it's not too bad. You can still live in that area and work together. I just, I just because yeah. I think you went on in a very quick, uh, like in a succession of things, but I'm just wanted to simplify the whole process again, if you don't mind. So. Internal medicine training is a training application which is not open around the year. So there's a specific time of the year the application opens and stays open for a month or so. And the application is all done via Oriel website. There's a website, you have to make an account, you have to fill up an application form and then you have to submit the application. So everything that you will do about training will be done via Oriel website. So application via Oriel and then comes short listing, probably long listing first, uh, but then short listing and you will be called for an interview just based on the application that you have submitted. So interview, after interview, uh, uh, you will be given a time to put your preferences in. I think, no, after interview, you, you're found appointable first. Well, you have to be found appointable. You have to be found appointable, that means your interview went well, and then you'll give you a list of all the spaces that you have, like, you know, they're open region-wise, to put your preferences in. So when you put preferences in, that is when Ibris talked about finding the place that you want to work at and matching with your spouse or partner that would put the similar preferences. So that one, whenever you get it, I mean, you have to perform similar as well. Yes, That's that the, is another, that is a caveat. So That's one the of the thing, cons the of thing this. Is, so preferences you have put, yeah. but how will you be put into that post? It's based on your rank. So after the interview and application, there will be scoring and everything. Say if... 200 people applied for this uh, say internal medicine training so they will rank someone the first someone to the second and someone to the 200th so whoever has become ranked first their first preference they will get it anyway so if you think about that way so there is a rank on this aisle and there is like their own preferences so number one what preferences they have put so they will get their first preference number two what preferences they have put if they have put the same preference as the number one and there yep. was only one post so that means the number two will not get that rank. They will be choose to the second one. So whichever you want to do most, you will have to put your preferences higher. And whichever you don't want to do, even if you get it, don't put in your preferences. Exactly. Do not do not put a place that uh, that you would know you would never of, go. Yeah. A lot of people said that oh, I got I got put into Isle of Man. I got put into Northern Ireland, but I don't want to go. Then why did you put into the preferences if don't you didn't want to go? Yeah. So somebody may have wanted to go to Northern Ireland, and they will not like you know get this post. Just because you put it so always remember choose which region you want to train and then put your preferences that way and in between those regions think about if there is a way of knowing which specialties are rotated because they'll probably give away that in those preferences as well and exactly. you can see there exactly so that's what we did we put the preferences and we got ranked kind of the similar zone but there is also an an option of holding and then changing your preferences back so say uh, like for example say Ibris got somewhere else and I got somewhere else now we both decided no one of us will hold the place and another one try to change it so you can actually mail the IMT recruitment office and ask like how should we go about it because my spouse has got this uh, offer and I got yeah. this offer now what we do so they will actually guide you the guidance is 
that you can hold and go back and change all your preferences. Like say, uh, Ibris got into Plymouth and I didn't get into Plymouth. So I w got somewhere. So I hold my place and went back to my preferences and moved everything else out, 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 out other than only Plymouth. Yeah. So I have only say 15 preferences and the place I already have. So if somebody from this 15 Plymouth moves away, I'll be put into place if my rank comes higher than them. So, so that's, that's how we can uh, get about the whole thing, even if you don't get it. And it's not that you're declining your offer. So your offer still stays. But if you're lucky, then the whole upgrade thing will come into play. All right. Is there anything you want to add? So if by any chance you decide, you know what? Yeah, I, didn't, I, I got into this place and I thought about maybe I was going to go there, but now I don't want to go there. Or for some reason, maybe both of you all, if, you, if, if it's a couple, you know, that's applying, if you guys can't manage to get into the same place and you're deciding, no, I don't want to do IMT this year, don't think you can't just say, I don't want to take this, I, I want to decline the offer. You have every right to decline the offer. Where things become tricky is when you actually take the offer and then you say, no, I don't want to. Because by that time, all of the options for individuals to then get an, an, an opportunity to apply for any other available posts that are left over are gone. So it makes things yeah. difficult. So when you are given an offer, be absolutely sure whether you want to accept or decline. Yes. Because if you don't, if you like, no, it's too far away. I don't want to go work there, but I'll just accept it and see how it goes. No, if you don't want to do that, just decline it because it will be a, like, you know, I think kind of it a looks, bad, it, it looks, it looks bad. bad that it you accepted bad, yeah. it and just before the recruitment, you just walked away. If you so, then decide to apply next year, they can ask you, they have the right there to There is ask a you. question like, oh, have you ever declined or, or because basically you would not be declining. They will be crossing you off because you accepted already. Exactly. There is no way to decline anymore. So they will be like, okay, now you said we'll have to cross you off from a training and it will be a vacant post because yeah. you already accepted it. Exactly. So, but if you had declined it initially when you were given the offer, they were happy to put that offer to somebody else because you declined it. So keep all of those things in mind. Another really important thing when you, and, and I want to just say oh, one important point, all these things that we said about ranking and you know being a couple, that's for every training. Yeah. That's not just for internal medicine training. Yeah. So don't think that you guys can't get jobs in the same place. Now it might be more tricky if you guys are in different training programs, yeah. but the same concept basically is still there when it comes to ranking preferences. If you see, for instance, if Ibrahim decided to apply for core surgical training, and then I decided to, <laughs> well, if you did, and then I decided to apply for internal medicine training obviously we couldn't rank the exact same preferences because the preferences would differ exactly. but the but hospitals the geography the ge would come geography, into play yeah, yeah exactly geographically speaking we could probably still get in the same area we might even be lucky enough to get in the same hospital because the, our hospital will still need core surgical trainees his hospital will still need you know internal medicine trainees it's just a matter of obviously sitting there it's very important when you rank your preferences to at least spend like two or three days exactly like really I, I sit they, there they also suggest like don't don't intend to do it in one sitting because you'll have to really look into uh, the post and every other thing. And I, th I think, yes, it's, it's a very cumbersome approach, but at the same time, it's your decision, you know, yeah. it's your active decision what you're doing. It's not, it's not completely on the luck, you know, you mm. are actually making the preferences and uh, like if you're absolutely sure that, no, I don't want to go anywhere if I cannot drive from where I'm staying right now then just yeah. only put those preferences in. If you don't get an offer, you don't get an offer. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no rush to get into training. You can always apply next year. It's not like you won't have a job in the meantime. You can still have your non-training post for whatever duration that you want it to be. And like, don't think that you have to be in a certain area at that same time. Like, I know Ibrahim's saying like, if you've got family nearby, but don't think, no, if I don't get into training in this city, the training is bad everywhere else. No, the training is standardized throughout the United Kingdom. Because the deaneries train, make sure. Yeah, the training is, made and written by the Royal College, Joint Royal Colleges Training Board, I think JRCPTB or something. So they have made the curriculum for the training and they instruct all the deaneries like Health Education of England, Wales deanery, Scotland deanery or Northern Ireland deanery, those part or even the branches of Health Education in England to make sure that that like you know curriculum is being taught at, and being like you know maintained, uh, maintained throughout the, the training process. So training is similar everywhere but it all depends on where do you want to stay and like, you know, where do you see yourself in future? Yeah, exactly. Another common question we get asked a lot, can I join internal medicine training directly from home? Um, I mean, you can. Technically. If, technically you can. If you can prove 
uh, that you have the foundation doctor competencies. Like if you can get crest signed by some way or form by proving that you have done all the things a foundation doctor's supposed to do, not being in the UK, you basically can apply for internal medicine training and you can even start internal medicine training as your first job in the UK. But whether I'll recommend it or not, that's the second question. Whether I will recommend it, but it's up to your choice. I will not. Will you, Bruce? No, I, I probably wouldn't either, honestly. <laughs> because what, when we started um, working in the NHS, it's, it's a completely new healthcare system. It's a completely different society. It's a completely different culture. So it, it, it takes a bit of time to get used to the whole thing and understand how the whole NHS run um, uh, and, and, and to be a part of it. To start that, being in a trainee is like a huge um, responsibility. I would say responsibility. And at the same time, there's a very, it's a very quick way to get dissatisfied about your job because this whole training thing, like, you know, after working in the UK for one year, we got to know where in the UK is everything. Like, you know, Southwest is warmer. Uh, like, you know, Yorkshire is colder. <laughs> you know, Scotland is even colder. Uh, those kind of things. And, you know, where where can you get this where can you get that and how is like life living in the uk without knowing all of this committing to a training uh it's it's i cannot even think about it geographically first and then think about long term like you know when you come to the uk as a non-training job this is a very fixed term contract job you're not tied to it you don't have that much of uh, your career education responsibility you can just do the job get paid every month and then think about what you're going to do next. And I think that gives you an ample of opportunity to enrich your portfolio and at the same time uh, uh, to decide what you want to do. Maybe you think about doing internal medicine training and you came to the UK as a non-training doctor and you saw internal medicine training, you was like, I don't want to do that. I probably would better off doing a GP training. See, if you started off internal medicine yeah. training, you didn't even have that opportunity. You'd be like, now I'm in training. Should I, it's like become like what you invest in something and, and then you feel like- Sunk cost fallacy? Yeah, sunk cost fallacy. So you've already put all that yeah, you have already put on the thing. already year of internal medicine. Should I just leave and do GP training? Then you complete your internal medicine training. Then you don't go into specialty and you go back to GP training. So that can I mean, happen. You can do that. <laughs> I mean, you can do that. I'll just say that you can do that. But, but if you would you be it, happy exactly, doing but that? But if you just came to the UK just doing a non-training job and a trust fellow or like you know uh, any kind of SHO level job without any training commitment and getting paid the same, doing the same work, but understanding the system. And then when you're eligible and have done the work necessary to apply for the training and then apply for the training and find out what... I, I have seen a lot of people thinking about, oh, I'll do surgery in the UK. They have passion about surgery. But they came here and they worked in a surgical department in the England and they said, no, I don't see myself doing that here. I'll, 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 I think I'll just go to GP training. See, they had that... They keep saying GP training, but it doesn't necessarily mean they all always <laughs> GP training. I have seen some... I know, I know a lot of people who wanted to do surgery and then ended up in A&E. Because they I loved have seen people who wanted to do GP, but came here and saw the how the GP is run. They're like, I don't want to do that. I want to do something so pediatric. <laughs> I know. No, I mean, it's just, it could be anything. Exactly. It so doesn't necessarily mean that whatever you wanted to do is bad. It's just I think what what you expect how things to be at home aren't necessarily the way things are going to be here. Exactly the point. Yes. So give yourself some time get into some sort of non-training job that you think that you want to like you know pursue at some point and see whether that uh, like you know uh, uh, that specialty is appropriate for you or talk to other colleagues in different specialties and choose so non-training okay, job non-training job before a training job is really necessary in my opinion for international graduates another important part about understanding the specialty that you want to choose i know we're talking about how we got internal medicine training but when you're in a non-training job or when you before you start out in deciding which training you want to get into see what the life of the consultants are like good because that will tell you everything you need to know because it could be that you really love the training and then you see the consultants are always working or they don't have their weekends off and maybe that's not something that you want in the long term so it's really important to you know find those consultants in those specialties and talk to them and be like hey i want to do this is it a good idea if i have these commitments later on in life because I, I can just give you an example. Before working into uh, like cardiology right now that we're working, I didn't know that interventional cardiologists are basically have to be in the hospital, stay awake all the time when they're on call because there is no time a person can ha cannot have an MI and they'll have to come and do PCI and all the other stuff. So some of the consultants 
uh, like you know, uh, in their life they don't have to come to a hospital. If, even if an emergency breaks out, they can do everything by phone. But an interventional cardiologist can't. So, so th these are the things you really have to like. If you are an hematologist, you don't have to be in the hospital to give your opinion. At, more often than not, I think ever. Like you know, you can give your opinion over the phone, yeah. whatever the emergency is. Uh, so choosing your specialty as a consultant, because I think most part of your life you'll be a consultant than a trainee, right? Unless you take it slow, which is fine too. <laughs> Even if you take it slow, you breeze, you know, like, you know, there would be a time that you'll be more yeah. years of a consultant than you're just <laughs> seven years of training, yeah? So I'd mentioned a little bit earlier about how your IMT duration can depend on what type of training you want to later pursue. For instance, if you want to take an acute or non-acute specialty. So if you want to do something non-acute in the long term for your specialty training, something like rheumatology or hematology or oncology, you only actually have to do IMT for two years. You don't have to do it for the full three years. That doesn't mean if you do it for three years, you can't apply for those specialties, but it's just up to you if you want that extra year. On the other hand, if you want to do an acute specialty like cardiology or gastro or respiratory medicine, you have to do three years. There's no way around it, okay? I think if, more detailed information is in our blog article. Uh, if you just link in, like, you know, the link is in the description box below. You can just see internal medicine training article. We have a list of group one specialties. We yeah. have a list of group two specialties. Find uh, which specialty you want to pursue. We have also another article uh, called Medicine Training for International Medical Graduates. That is also linked. You can read that article. There is a chart uh, actually saying which exams you have to take in between uh, to proceed into further training. Yeah. And don't think, I know we talked about it being an uncoupled specialty and you finish your internal medicine training. Don't think you have to go and apply for specialty training the next year. You can take time off in between. That is one of the perks, I think, of an uncoupled specialty. Because yeah. training can get pretty stressful. You've got a lot of stuff to do training-wise, portfolio-wise, and, and things that you need to complete. So if you feel like, you know what, I've done this much of my training, I want to take a break, take a break and then continue with your training. If you're somebody who is otherwise, like Ibrahim said before, really well qualified, you've done MRCP already, you've got years of experience under your belt, and you're like, no, I don't want to do internal medicine training, you can get your alternative core competency signed off for medicine and then apply for specialty training. That is something a little more tricky than obviously going through IMT, but it could also potentially save you time. How much time is really dependent on you and the individual that you're working under and whether or not you're able to complete all of those things mentioned in the competency forms. And that form can also be found on Oriel's website. Uh, here I can show you uh, uh, where can I go and find the alternative core competency certificate. It's on the Oriel website. And if you look at the certificate, you can see on the left hand side, there is a column of different competencies that you have to achieve. So let's say if you're working in a non-training SHO job and you've already completed MRCP, say you came completing MRCP and you probably got a registered job or an SHO job or any kind of clinical fellow job mm. and you look at the alternative core competency certificate and you actually gather your evidences against all of them. And you talk to the consultant, it's like, I have already completed MRCP and I want to join a specialty training of choice, but I don't want to do internal medicine training. I can just follow this core competency certificate, alternative core competencies, and can you sign me that off? The consultant, whoever is your supervisor, clinical supervisor, you will have one, uh, you will be working with somebody. So uh, they will probably look at the certificate and then guide you towards how can you go forward and finish that whole thing. So how long will it take? It entirely depends upon you. Like it can be done for six months, it can be done, uh, you know, two years, it completely, because in term medicine training, I cannot finish the training as soon as I want. Like, you know, I have to do three years. There is no way I can actually complete this earlier than I want to. But if you take that route that you have already completed MRCP and you want to get alternative core competencies, you can actually do at your own pace. So, it's really pretty out here. <laughs> I kept uh, getting distracted a little bit in the video, guys, and I apologize. You probably saw me going off camera once or twice. It's just so mainly because how this, lovely this, the weather is. This is, I think, King Alfred's Tower? It is. Yeah. It is. Uh, I think if you're really interested, you can Google this place up. Uh, and I think that's that's where we end this video. Yeah. So there you are, guys. That's how we got into internal medicine training. If you decide internal medicine training is a thing for you, by all means apply. If not, we have so many articles talking about all the different specialties that you can pursue and never think that as an internal medicine graduate, any door is closed to you regarding your specialty. The competition is always there, but no one will ever discriminate you based on your passport. So until next time, I'm a breeze. I am Ibrahim. <laughs> and please, guys, please, 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 if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Yeah. Bye. Bye.